Dear viewers, welcome you all to our show, OSA, that is Orthopedic Solution Academy. Hope you all are well with your families and friends and definitely with your patients. Dear viewer, today our topic is the principles of deformity correction around ankle joint with Elizaro. And the speaker is the one and only, the Alexander Elizaro surgeon of Srinagar, India, Professor Althav Sir. I would like to request Professor Althav Sir to join with us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for joining with us. Dear viewers, we have a learned academic expert with us. Uh, one of them is the pioneer Elizabeth of Surgeon of Bangladesh, Professor Mufakarul Barisar. I would like to request the legendary Elizabeth of Surgeon of Bangladesh, Professor Mufakarul Barisar, to join with us. Good, Sir, afternoon. Good, afternoon. Good, afternoon. good afternoon. I'm very much happy to see the new face, Altab, my friend. Huh. Thank you. <laughs> it's a great honor for us, sir. I would like to request Professor Novikov, sir, the highly academician from Kurgan, Russia. Professor Novikov, sir, would you please join with us? So thank you very much for joining with us. Now I'd like to request Professor Omur, sir, from Kurdistan, Iraq. Professor Omur, sir, would you please join with us? Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Now I'd like to request a very enthusiastic Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir, from Patna, India. Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir, would you please join with us? Thank you and good afternoon, Dr. Amit. Good afternoon, sir. Dear viewers, we all know that we can do many things by Elizaro, such as the deformity correction. And today our topic is the principles of deformity correction around ankle joint. Now, I'd like to request our honorable speaker, Professor Althav, sir to share his screen with us. Sir, would you please share your screen and start your presentation, sir, please. Well, I think the screen is already shared. Yeah. So it's available? Yes, sir. It's absolutely fantastic, sir. Thank you. Thank you. At the outset, I am very thankful to Dr. Professor Bari and his team, Dr. Ashraf and uh, Dr. Shamsul and Professor Novikov and Professor Omar. And it's a great opportunity for me to express my views on this deformity correction. So directly going to this, uh, my presentation. You know, I made this presentation in order to highlight the principles of deformity correction around ankle. So as uh, like an ankle, the deformities around ankle have secondary compensatory influences on the joints of the foot. That's why it's very important to understand what happens with the deformities around angle, ankle and what happens to its secondary influences on the foot joints. Because you see, in order to know the actual biomechanics, we must understand the biomechanics around ankle first. So we need to know the center of the ankle joint, which could be got from the plafond, the center of it, or it could be from the center of the talus. And then we need to know the mid-diaphyseal line, then the cortical lines of the tibia, because when extended, these fall within the body of the talus. That means their alignment is well. Now, understanding ankle deformities, what happens with the valgus at ankle? You know, the valgus deformities lead to secondary varus at the subtalar joint and then subsequently to the forefoot supination. This is very important to know if one is correcting the ankle deformity at valgus deformity at ankle, then there is a compensation at the subtalar joint. This tries to compensate to get the foot into the plantigrade uh, position. But then one has to understand whether this subtalar joint now which has compensated is fixed or it's mobile because this has to have a it has to have an effect once we are correcting the valgus deformity here. If this deformity is fixed, that means the foot would go into varus. Final position would be varus. But if this is if this is supple, it would mean that once the deformity is correct, this is corrected, this can be got back into its original position. So how much valgus can be compensated at the subtalar joint? You know, the normal inversion at the subtalar joint is 30 degrees. So if you have a ankle valgus deformity of 30 degrees, that can be equally compensated. You can see both lines are coming uh, you know, parallel. 
but they are not in uh, one plane. Though the foot has gone into the plyoid degrade foot position, but the axes are different. Beyond this compensation comes from the foot supination. Similarly, what would happen with the varus at ankle? You have a severe varus here. The varus deformity, on the other hand, results in secondary valgus at the subtalar joint. Now, this would depend upon how much inversion is available at the subtalar joint. Normal inversion at ankle is 15 degrees. That's only 15 degrees can be compensated. So we must understand that valgus can be better compensated, but varus is not that much compensated more than the valgus. See, only 15 degrees can be compensated. If the angle was 105, that would mean it would get totally compensated. But beyond this, there would be no compensation at the subtalar joint. But the compensation would come from the pronation of the foot. So in this presentation, I would like to highlight the principles regarding simple plane deformities, one plane deformities, or if we had severe deformities around ankle, like this both in pediatric group and adult group, and then what happens with sagittal deformities, then deformities that are associated with limb ring discrepancy, and contractures around ankle, and then deformities that would need salvage rather than simple deformity correction, like this patient. This would be for, for the salvage. So you see, the conventional x-rays are the foremost uh, x-rays that are needed. But this is a very important x-ray. This is the long axial x-ray of the ankle, which includes the proximal part of the tibia, then talus, and the calcaneus. This gives us the actual presentation of different angles and different compensations of uh, the deformities at ankle as well as its compensation at the subtalar joint. So what is the ring config configuration? We usually use a three ring construct, one just above the ankle, second one at the working distance from this, and third at the level of the fibular head to make things at a safer level. So going with a simple deformity, you have a valgus deformity with cora at the juxtaphysial position. So we would use the osteotomy rule too. That would create smaller translation depending upon how much away, it's, how much far it's from the cora. Though it's, in this case, it's slight, it's not much away from the cora. So not much of a translation is expected. But actual deform, uh, deformity correction is revealed by the amount of lengthening that's happening in the fibula after opening the wedge. So these are the cortical lines. You see they are not going through the talus, means the alignment is not proper. This is during correction, the gradual correction, and the ankle is now parallel. And this is the clinical correction. And now if we see that uh, these cortical lines, they are now going through the talus. Though there is some degeneration already in the talus, but now alignment is absolutely perfect. And this can tell you actually how much uh, lengthening was needed in the lateral side as well. Because they include, this would mean the wedge was this much. And then let's go through this frontal plane uh, severe deformity. This was a 10-year-old boy with road traffic accident at the age of five years. It was a crash injury with loss of extensor tendons. So not only is there deformity, but he doesn't have the tendon function on the dorsum of foot. So there is a kind of a foot drop. And importantly, a big scar area on the ankle joint. This is the poor child, this abnormal gait. A lot of stresses on the ankle now. 
this shows the growth arist area here and a valgus deformity of 60 degrees. And if we try to find out the cora, cora is at the juxtaphysial position. Since the deformity is already of a greater magnitude and that it appears that there has been no growth happening on this area. So we did not think about growth modulation. So plan was to do deformity correction by the gradual method of Lizro. 60 degree valgus. Again, the long actual view, the amount of valgus, the teller line and the and this is the virus compensation. And in this case, once we saw this subtalar joint appeared very stiff to begin with. So we had to plan according to that. So this is how we plan the osteotomy rule two. Osteotomy rule two would mean that you have the hinges at the cora and the osteotomy can be done proximal to that to have adequate fixation of the fragments. And what uh, rule two means that once we are correcting the deformity, there is insinuation of this fragment so that actual alignment comes in the center of it. And there is no golf club deformity created. A simple, uh, this, um, a simple osteotomy rule would have corrected it, but that would have translated the foot on this side. Here, this is the compensatory translation to align the mechanical axis of both the proximal and the distal fragments. This is the application of the frame. And it's very handy. This mine practice, I feel that you need to have some stronger fixation on the distal fragment to make the, to create a mechanical advantage in the ring system. Because otherwise, we've seen that few wires only, they don't uh, put in a lot of pressure because this is a deformity of long standing duration. So it needs a stronger motor hold to open up the uh, osteotomy level. This is during the process of correction. The wedges are opening and the distal fragment is getting inside. And an interesting thing is that once we correct the deformities, the rotational components then come up, they show up. Like in this patient, this is the knee joint. Now the foot is in internal rotation. Now the beauty of Elizero is that its versatility is that you can manage with any of the difficulties that are encountered in the post-op period. So we add these uh, derotation bars and have the deformity corrected totally. And now the rotation component is also taken care of. This is the clinical picture at the end of the treatment. The alignment is excellent, deformities are corrected, and importantly, no problems with the scar on the ankle. And now this is the interesting thing which I wanted to tell you that since this deformity had a fixed virus, so we are seeing that this line is straight, everything is aligned, but ankle is in slight valgus still. So we preferred to use this rather than have an osteotomy at the at the calcaneus later in order to align the limb in proper mechanical axis. At the end of the treatment, we physodis this so as to prevent any recurrence of the deformity. Now, this is same things that happen, uh, same things in adult. This is a 33-year-old male with history of osteomyelitis distal fibula, which has led to this deformity in the childhood. Again, 55 degrees of valgus, you see the problem lies here. This has been the cause resulting in the ankle valgus. Again, same way evaluation. And now here, this is a virus 
this compensation and fortunately here the ankle was supple subtalar was supple it was do stiff but correctable again osteotomy in the same way this is not this was not a planned one but this is traumatic osteotomy after opening up the wedges the deformity is corrected we have removed the this calcaneum frame this is during correction and this is the final correction we have been absolutely good in restoring this ankle and you can watch this this is the amount of insinuation that has gone inside as per the osteotomy rule 2 and now this axis is straight so you have both ankle is corrected as well as this axis is straight so there are no issues this is the amount i wanted to show how much it has rotated inside this is the pre op and the post op picture at two years now sagittal plane deformity this is more complex than the frontal ones so this is represented by this case of 18 years old boy with a history of trauma ankle in childhood this is resultant anterior distal facial arrest and a 6 cm shortening with anterior distal tibial angle of 53 only now what are the secondary effects of recurvatum one needs to know that normal anterior distal tibial angle is 80 degrees normal dorsal flexion is 20 and plantar flexion is 50 so in case of a recurvatum the compensation comes from plantar flexion since you have a good chunk of plantar flexion so usually recurvatums are better compensated than the procurvatum like this boy you see if this is an animation created by me in order to explain so this is the position this is the recurvatum so this component that tibia tends to use the plantar flexion to come make it plantigrade finding the cora rest of physical area so an osteotomy above and the osteotomy rule 2 application of rings the hinges at the definitely at the this cora level and osteotomy could be done proximally so again we would like to have an osteotomy rule in this fashion so that the ultimate axis comes in the center and once the procur like this is the compensation once the procurvatum is corrected the ankle would resume its own position the compensation would go so since this child needed simultaneous lengthening so proximal cord cut me was added and deformity was corrected at the distal leg distal level this is the frame you can see the amount of recurvatum and then this is the motor unit for distraction hinges distally during correction and we can watch this is the distal fragment that has rotated inside for a compensatory translation and this is the final correction my ankle joint is restored what happens with the procurvatum deformity like varus it's not better tolerated the compensation comes from dorsal flexion now only 20 degrees of dorsal dorsal flexion is available so in this child there's a procurvatum of around 30 degrees now again here what we have done we have used the osteotomy rule 1 and we have taken out the wedge and did pro uh, anterior compression this has restored the procurvatum the angles are restored here and now you can look at this can you can see the orientation of the talocalcanus here and compare to to this one once the angles are settled the compensations go compensation goes off 
the deformity with shortening this is 11 year old girl with sequelae of road traffic accident and there's a hemifacial growth arrest with varus deformity and a shortening of 4 cm in addition she has an external rotation deformity same plan this has rather two coras she has some angulation here also in addition to this and procurvatum is a oblique plane deformity so again after the use of lizro this is restored back to its normal position with so many scars around but it has not been bothered this is the correction excellent clinical clinical correction but some degrees of valgus and procurvatum is still there because the other cora was here that was supposed to be taken care at a second stage then one of the important applications is orthodiastasis equines correction in ankle contractures on the principles of orthodiastasis soft tissue destruction so we use a conventional foot assembly one or the two uh, tibial full rings half ring at the calcaneus and half or full ring at the forefoot and then this has to go in a differential manner in order to prevent the crushing of talus so it has to have a lengthening mode and then deformity correction exemplified by this 23 years old student had stretcher lengthening elsewhere presented with bilateral equinus contractures it's not working so again use the principles of orthodiastasis for calcaneal we used uh, this uh, shan screw to make a stronger fixation then differential distraction was started correction achieved the ankle is horizontal and on the other side this was again applied on right side again orthodiastasis and corrected there is some valgus deformity residually left still in the right because it was from the previous uh, lengthening area would have needed a separate osteotomy for that then salvage of deformities patients with severe deformity associated with degenerative changes elizro is the best method to deal with this this is, we are routinely using this methodology at our institution for these complex difficult and degenerative deformities has had previous surgeries with shortenings and then he had a foot drop with flail ankle and had this much difficulty in walking in order to attain a plantigrade foot we planned a pantellar orthodesis subtellar as well as the ankle orthodesis using the conventional lizro frame and corrected it fully we have a very good experience of ankle orthodesis at our institution with the lizro we already published before this ankle orthodesis using the lizro technique an experience with 16 patients difficult patients those included infective ones also and this is giving us wonderful results so the message is lizro technique is an ex excellent method for deformity correction around ankle but understanding of basic biomechanics and principles of deformity correction is a must thank you very much for your attention Hello. Okay. Dr. Tamir. So in the meantime, we are, may I request Dr. Bari for any questions, sir? You cannot hear, sir. Eh? Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Hello, Shamsul. 
Yes, sir. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you uh, uh, for your excellent presentation, sir. And, uh, and that was uh, really enjoyable. Now, I would like to request uh, Professor Mufakrul Bari, sir, to say something regarding the presentation, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Altaf Kaosa, my friend. It's a very, <laughs> good, you, very good topic. And uh, you nicely elaborated all the deformities. These Thank are all you, challenging problems for the orthopedic surgeons. And right, uh, especially, especially the all severe deformities uh, you mentioned regarding the virus, regarding the valgus. And at the same time, uh, you have mentioned everything with the virus at the ankle, what happens and how to correct that one. And the uh, subtalar joint problem and at the same time arthrodiastasis and ankle arthrodiasis. Yes. These are the all difficult problems that you have shown and my uh, observation and uh, the thing is that if you have Elizarov in your hand with a basic understanding and uh, uh, you know advanced understanding you can solve a lot of problems that you have shown in your uh, presentation and nice. uh, you know severe frontal plane deformity uh, even you can see the 10 years old 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 boy you have shown and uh, for the adult uh, for the adult no problem sometimes whenever you go for the you know uh, the young uh, children severe deformity what's your comment regarding the recurrence of the uh, deformity again this is my one observation and question to you uh, regarding the 10 years, 8 years, severe deformity, recurrence rate in your cases. This patient, the present case, sir? Yeah. Yeah, because, sir, what I, that's why I said that once I completed the treatment, I also did, I first did the medial aspect. So that's why there was no chance of a recurrence there. I didn't let it grow. Mm. So the deformity, because the medial medial aspect was still open, and that was yeah. actual problem leading to the deformity. Once mm -hmm. I corrected the deformity, I first reduced that, and the yes. growth modulation on that side. That I, that slide I had not included. Otherwise, I have done that. So that and because that I learned from uh, doing my deform earlier deformities in children, that if we don't uh, attempt the growth mod modulation later, they are going to recur. This is yeah. absolutely certain concern, sir. Yeah. Uh, and uh, regarding the ankle osteoarthrosis, see, right. uh, I am doing, I am uh, telling just my experience, ankle osteoarthrosis, degenerative change in the ankle joint. You can go arthrodiastasis. And it I, gives I, a absolutely, good sir. I, I have many number of cases that I did arthrodiastasis in the... Uh, osteoarthritic group and with an excellent result. In, in excellent fact, result. Uh, uh, other day only, I had a patient with he, she had an impeachment. So I added orthoscopy. For, on the orthoscopy first, I did the impeachment. I removed the impeachment and then put in the distraction mode only. And patient is exactly painful. exactly. Patient is and but this this index case was a severe deformity. So I preferred and it was a flail ankle. In addition to deformity, osteoarthritis, flailness, I prefer to do an orthodesis. Yes. Uh, regarding arthrodiasis, how many days you go for distraction and whatever your frequency rate and uh, uh, I how, go at the conventional so, so uh, I go with the conventional rate of 0.25 millimeters four times a day and distract only few millimeters. One doesn't need to actually distract too much. For an ankle, for so an keep ankle. it distracts for few day, few weeks, and then see the pain response. You, you go for only three millimeter. Uh, yeah, only sir, only few millimeter because the ankle joint is a small area. Uh, small area, but I am telling you, you, even I have done the ten millimeter, it it, it, it come back again, and it gives a very good result. If you go for ten days for distraction. It doesn't right. uh, do any hamper. Do then you have is, sir, any specific uh, recommendations for the amount of distraction? 10, 10 days for recommendation. 
even in the knee joint, in the ankle joint for 10 days, you do and keep it for three more times. That is for one month or one and a half months. Then you can remove the apparatus. I am, I am routinely doing five to 10 millimeter ankle destruction arthrodiastasis. And it gives fantastic result, I tell you. Those who are suffering with the ankle osteoarthrosis, okay. you, uh, arthritis or arthrosis, uh, because degenerative and dystrophic change, that is, that's why I'm telling this arthrosis, degenerative dystrophic change. And beautifully, the ladies especially, I have seen, uh, they're, you know, enjoying the result of the osteoarthrosis by arthrodiastasis. I don't know what about your ankle joint replacement that, that makes a hazard for the uh, patients. Ankle joint replacement. Yes, sir, there is absolutely no losing in doing this procedure. Even if somebody gets a pain-free area of 10, 15 years or 5, 10 years before yes. uh, full-fledged uh, orthodesis or orthoplasty, there's nothing like yeah. that. This yes, will be a wonderful yes. uh, intermediate procedure. And then being a, being a minimally invasive technique, there is nothing, no implant, nothing. It's a distraction nothing. for a few uh, yes. weeks, that's all. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Altaf. Uh, enjoyed. Thank you very much for uh, uh, joining you with us. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for your nice discussion. Now, I would like to request uh, Professor Omur, sir, to say something. Much. I congratulate him really. I have no any comment. Very nice job. Very nice result. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Shamsuruja, sir, uh, just <laughs> got disconnected as because of uh, uh, his network problem is there. And Professor Novikov, sir, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes. Novikov. Yeah, I have you. <laughs> now you just continue. Now, now you uh, Excellent. Everything is good. And uh, I have one question uh, uh, for our speakers. Uh, I want to say uh, thank you very much for excellent experience and uh, for his knowledge. And uh, sometimes we have uh, patients with uh, one frame near the ankle joint and another frame to the foot. What do you think? This is enough? This is stable? I couldn't get you a question, sir. No, you because, are, you are uh, putting... two. Uh... Uh, would, you, would you please repeat the would question, you repeat sir? The question, sir? You are, are you saying about the stability of the frame? Uh, yes, yes. Frame near the yeah, I should, ankle joint yeah. and the foot. Yeah, yeah. I should. I, Very close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is I a should. stable system. This is enough or no? What do you think, Dr. Help, uh, for, for, for simple orthodesis, sir, I would go only across the joint only. But if in case of an orthodesis... system is stable and this He's asking, uh, 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 this is your, your frame construction is stable for ankle joint or not? Yeah, yeah, because, sir, for uh, conventional things, I showed the ring construction. I showed three ring construct. And I grow across the ankle in the calcaneum also. But in one case, only the orthodesis case, case, that had only the only one ring. But I had added drop pins on that. But I agree with you, in case of orthodastasis, you need a stronger fixation. Yes. Because that creates a lot of forces across the ankle. That's why in other case, I had a full no, flush frame on yes. that. Right, right. But for ankle orthodesis, a conventional simple touring frame could be enough, sir, with a foot frame included. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Novikov, sir. Novikov, sir, do you have uh, any any more questions to Professor Atov, sir? Oh, thank you very much for uh, your experience. Excellent result. And uh, I am, uh, have one question. Where you take uh, this is the frame from carbon? Plastic frame, plastic Elizarov. Where you take it? It's readily available with us. It's readily available with us, carbon fiber. I routinely use carbon because this is lightweight. Are you getting me? 
Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, he's getting he's getting a but uh, a little bit late uh, due to due to net problem. There is some delay in. Yes, sir. Delay in transmission of sound, sir. No problem is there. I think uh, Navikup sir got that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, our honourable academic expert, and thank you, our honourable speaker, for his magnificent presentation, and our honourable academic expert for brilliant discussion there. Uh, uh, dear viewers, uh, I would like to thank Raj Subhi for helping us to arrange this type of academic program, and definitely Renata Pharmaceuticals Bangladesh Limited for sponsoring this program. I'm Dr. Mohammad Tanvi Ashraf saying bye bye today, and hope we'll connect with you in the coming Friday with another magical Elizabeth topic. Till then, I would like to say bye bye to all of you. Bye bye. You are watching Raj TV. Jagorone Bangladesh. Please subscribe our channel.